on the calendar saw the Abtsa Off-Road Championship venture into the free state for the first time with the Himan Auto 400 based in Bloemfontein. The major city in the free state has seen enormous growth in recent years and is also the judicial capital of South Africa. Bloemfontein has grown into a vibrant and cosmopolitan city and has a rich sporting heritage. Started 60 years ago, Himan Auto is a family business located in major centers in the Free State and Northern Cape, with the penultimate round of the ABSA series bringing mainstream national championship motorsport back to the region. Race headquarters, the start and finish and the designated service points were all located at Sun International's Windmill Casino Complex, situated alongside the N1 Highway. Events that make up the 8-race ABSA Off-Road Championship draw competitors from throughout South Africa and neighboring territories. With professional management and a tried and tested infrastructure, the ABSA Series is a jewel in the South African motorsport crown and the registration process prior to races is a smoothly run operation. The pit layout and the proliferation of team transporters also add to the aura of professionalism that surrounds off-road racing in South Africa. With the Himan Auto a new event on the calendar, there was the added air of expectancy in the pits as the clock started to run down towards the start of the Donaldson Prologue to determine start positions for the race. After two back-to-back -back disappointments, the Factory Ford team was determined to make the trip to the Free State a profitable one. We desperately need a good result. Uh, we, we've targeted this event to win it and uh, that's what we want to go out and do. Uh, Human Auto, it's, it's their 60th anniversary tomorrow and we'd love, to, we'd love nothing better than to give Human Auto and Ford Motor Company a win tomorrow. The successful Ruicon Racing Squad is based in Bloemfontein with team principal Peter Ruthven taking time out to list some of the benefits the race held for the Free State and the province's capital city. I think for Free State is put us on the map for the national series. It brings people to Bloemfontein. It invests about five million rand over a weekend in Bloemfontein that wasn't here. And it brings tourism to Bloemfontein that we need. After a couple of successful outings in Class E, medical man Johan de Lange made a quantum leap into the premier SP class in the production vehicle category. Buying the ex Chris Deploy Toyota Hilux put de Lange in fast forward mode. I think it's summarized by my gray hair. I don't have time to go through E class two years class D two years and then SP. So we decided to do it and uh, yeah, here we are. I did a few laps on the day that I decided to buy it and uh, we will learn as we go along. By contrast to De Lange, veteran Hannes Hrobler has legendary status in South African motorsport. Hrobler is an off-road racing elder statesman, but had a tough act to follow after winning the Toyota Desert Race in the RFS BMW. No, I think we're going to just get on and, and do our own thing. You know, it's, uh, the, the big thing is I think Chris has got the best chance of winning the championship. Uh, you know, we have to get the car still to the end to win the championship. I think the pace is going to be a little bit harder. And, uh, you know, if, if we want to win the championship, uh, you know, we need basically to win both the last two, two races, you know, so it's not going to be easy. In a tight championship race, leaders Chris Fisser and Jarpi Badenhorst went to Bloemfontein with an 11-point lead over Duncan Fast and Rob Howie, with Hannes Grobler and Henny Testeche a single point further back. The top five seeds in the Production Vehicle Championship draw start positions for the Donaldson Prologue, which determines race starting order. Crews don't like being number one on the road, but Chris Fisser was unperturbed about playing a pathfinding role. No, I don't know. I guess so, especially with this route, uh, it's new for everybody, and we first on the route, and I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Because it's <laughs> I, I, I know the guys are coming from behind, so I'll push as hard as I can. With crews about to dip their toes into untested waters, there was plenty of pre-prologue tension. Teams had no idea of what lay ahead for them, where route conditions were concerned. And the atmosphere as crews waited for the start was a little more tense than is usually the case. With five teams still in a mathematical chance of winning, the production vehicle championship and a tight situation at the top of the points table, crews were playing for high stakes. The Donaldson Prologue is a race within a race, and with little to choose between the top teams in the highly competitive SP class, a good grid position is as important in off-road racing as it is in Formula One. With this in mind, Donaldson Prologues are high-risk sprint races that turn into hectic affairs, with often dire consequences for crews who run into trouble out on the route.
From the start at the Windmill Casino Complex, the Prologue route ran north via the old Brandkorp racetrack to the popular Stuck in the Mud Resort and the De Brugge Army Base. Total distance for the Prologue was 60 kilometers, and in keeping with the trend on ABSA off-road events, there were plenty of spectator vantage points. The Team Castrol Toyota Hilux factory crew of Anthony Taylor and Robin Houghton have made a habit of winning prologues this season and were at it again on the Himon Auto 400. The pair are hugely experienced with Houghton a multiple South African off-road and rally champion, while Taylor has a tight grip on this year's Bridgestone Production Car Championship in National Circuit Racing. Although Taylor and Houghton have put themselves in a position to win races this season, the Absa Off-Road Series has not been kind to factory teams. Privateers won all but two of the six races won prior to the Free State outing, and the Team Castrol Toyota pair cut it fine on the prologue. They were just four seconds ahead of the impressive Thomas Rundle and former SA champion Juan Moore in the Barden Tire Services Nissan Navara. Behind the ex-factory Nissan, Hannes Grobler and Henny Terstierger continued their good form in the RFS BMW X3. The Toyota 1000 Desert Race winners were just five seconds behind the Baden Tire Services Navara entry, with the leading crews completing the 60km prologue in just over 41 minutes. With a podium finish on the 4x4 Megaworld 400 and a win on the Toyota Desert Race, the RFS BMW has been a revelation in its first season, with Grobler insisting the car is full in a development stage. Donaldson Prologues regularly produce surprise packages and the Rustenburg-based father and son crew of Willem and Dana Force duly obliged this time round by setting the fourth fastest time in the Fossey's Toyota Hilux. In only their second full season of racing, the enthusiastic Rustenburg pair were involved in a huge accident on the Sun City 400, but bounced back to score points on the 4x4 Mega World 400. More disappointment followed in Botswana on the Toyota Desert Race, but an impressive prologue saw them finish only 14 seconds behind the RFS BMW. The force combination had 15 seconds in hand over championship leaders Chris Fisser and Yapi Badenhorst, who were a little disappointed with fifth place in the RFS Toyota Hilux. Behind them, Gary Bertolt and Andre Vermeulen still had a mathematical chance of lifting the production car championship in the Atlas Copco Toyota Hilux and were just short of a minute behind prologue winners Taylor and Houghton. A turbo problem hampered the diesel Team Ford Ranger of former South African champions Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schulthammer. It was an early setback for the crew and they laboured to a disappointing seventh place. There were also problems for championship contenders Duncan Force and Rob Howie in the second factory team Castrol Toyota Hilux. A persistent misfire dropped them down the pecking order and they finished in eighth place with only seven seconds to spare over local crew Lodebrain and Rian Greilung in the nicely turned out Rubicon Ford Ranger. A steady run to Christian Deploy and Henk Janser van Vieren into 10th place in the RFS Toyota Hilux. The young Pretoria-based crew had picked up points in four of the six events so far and were lying 10th in the championship, but were among the list of non-finishers in Botswana. Next up were Peter Ruthven and Rudy Brutz in the Ruhrkon Toyota Hilux, with the Bloemfontein crew coming off an encouraging 7th place on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race. Another Bloemfontein crew had an even better result in Botswana, with George Barkhazen and David van Beek bringing the AIM Toyota Hilux home in 4th place overall. Going along steadily in only their second outing in an SP-class entry were reigning Class E champions Yanni Fisser and Jox Leroux. The Toyota Hilux was previously campaigned by Ramon and Marek Besaidenhout, and Fisser, brother of championship leader Chris and LaRue, were a scant six seconds ahead of another Free State crew in Quibus van Tonder and son-in-law Freddy Krill in the Unifreight Ford Ranger. In a close finish between a Toyota, Ford and Nissan, Sun City 400 winner Terence Marsh and stand-in navigator Richard Leake were only seven seconds behind the Unifreight car in the first of the Regent Racing Nissan Navaras. After two disappointing outings in the new N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser, the Louis Weichelt Johann Smallberger combination finally came good, with the pair the first car home in Class D. Weichelt and Smallberger were running ahead of impressive Class E leaders Hein Mullmann and JD Wolfhardt in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux.
chasing after the Class E car were the Class D teammates Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer, who won in Botswana in the new 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux, built by former Toyota factory crew chief Mark Jordan. Not far behind Fenta and Palmer were Northwest crew Malcolm Cock and Johan Berger, who were running second in Class E in another Toyota Hilux. A third 4x4 Mega World crew in Piki Labeskachny and Rikas Erasmus were a solid third in Class E, with Mulman Wolfart, Cock Berger and Labeskachny Erasmus looking to atone for the Toyota 1000 Desert Race non-finishers. Gerald LaRue and Willem Pretorius were also Botswana non-finishers in the Ruokan Racing Ford Ranger, along with Land Rover pair Jack and Saro Oersthuizen, who were nearly four minutes behind the Class D leaders. Motor racing can be a cruel sport, and after dominating Class E this season with three wins in six races, championship leaders teenager Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable crashed out of the Himan Auto 400. Young Woolridge and Huxtable were steaming along when the Team Ford Ranger hit a deep ditch at speed. The incident saw a shaken Woolridge taken to hospital in Bloemfontein with a back injury that could see him miss the final race of the season. Back at race headquarters at the Woodmill Casino Complex, it was time for the Donaldson Prologue inquests to begin. Yeah, I can say it was a very fun time. Was it a ongelukke volgend eerste positie getrek so was vir ons nogal 'n redelike roete soek maar ek moet sê was lekker gewees so daai plekke was tegnies op daai plekke vannag en meeste van die plekke was maar vannag gewees so ja maar was lekker gewees i think we've got the the, the second best time in uh, SP class so we we're very happy with that you know we've done a lot of work on the car you know between uh, Botswana and now um sorted out our overheating and our engine problems so yeah we really really happy with today's result yeah i was lekker vannag gewees Baie breed, die paie is baie breed, so jy, jy is heel tyd daar hoog in die rat in. En dan, uh, jy, hy het baie, jy spaar sandstukkies, wat moeilik is, maar die bakkie sikkel om weg te kom in. So is amper soos aan die kaapse sand, maar as daarom net klein stukkies, dan is dit weg. Maar verder is die route lekker, is vannacht, baie vannacht. 